different spots. Another thing that, uh, you know, is interesting in this unit is, uh, you know, they actually have building shakers. Um, I show in this video clip, they actually have this, the frame of a building and the platform is moving back and forth, simulating an earthquake. And what happens is the, you know, the building is oscillating in simple harmonic motion going back and forth. And, you know, we can actually take a look at the dynamics of that. And these same equations apply. And the engineers would use these to uh, be able to evaluate what's going on. So, you know, obviously here, you know, if, if the, the, you know, the building's on one side, you know, and it's shaking back and forth, you'll have a certain amount of force trying to bring it back to the middle of that, that restoring force that we talked about. And so, you know, those buildings I showed you with the earthquake in Japan, same thing there, you know, the buildings are shaking back and forth and you have a, you know, it tries to force it back to the middle. So let's go ahead and try this with a uh, sample problem. Let's say that we have a five Newton per meter spring. We have it stretched to 55 centimeters and it's released and the mass is attached to the spring. Um, and let's say at this, po this moment in time, it's, it's 11 centimeters from equilibrium. And so let's, let's draw this out, right? So, so this is equilibrium right here. This is zero, right? This is the full amplitude the full amplitude here. And we want to find out at this spot right here, at this 0.11 meter spot, what's going on? You know, what's the velocity of that, you know, right here? So we know it's all potential over here, right? And then it's all kinetic here, but this is in between. So let's see if you can uh, figure that out um, by figuring, you know, using the total amount of energy equals the kinetic plus potential to figure out how fast it is in the middle. So go ahead and pause the clip and give that a shot. And when you're ready to check, you can hit play to continue. Okay, so we know that the total amount, right, of energy is equal to the kinetic plus the potential. And we have all these values, right? We know the amplitude, we know the K value, uh, we know how far it is from equilibrium, that's X right here. And we know the, you know, the K value again, and we're looking for V, you know, how fast is it going in that spot? 1.56 meters per second would be how fast it's going. So it would be the fastest in the middle here, right? But it just to that spot, you know, it's going that fast. Let's take a look at this one. This is a uh, spring and we have a 700 gram mass attached to it. It's oscillating between 1.2 and 2.4 meters. So these are the two locations, you know, it's going back and forth between those places. Uh, where is it moving the fastest? So where's, you know, what location is it on X where it's moving the fastest? And then how fast is it moving there? So in this one, you're going to need to draw this out and then, you know, interpret what's going on here, figure out what equilibrium is and, you know, where that's located. And then, yeah, see if you can go from there. So um, go ahead and pause the clip and give this a shot. And when you're ready to check, you can hit play to continue. Okay, so we've got the mass oscillating back and forth and the middle point um, right here would be 1.8 meters so that's going to be equilibrium okay because it's oscillating back and forth back and forth from here so that's the equilibrium position therefore the amplitude is 0.6 meters that's how far it is from here okay and then we have one half mv squared plus one half kx squared equals one half ka squared which is the total amount of energy and it's going to be fastest in the middle right where x equals zero so this is where you have to be careful this is the equilibrium position so therefore you wouldn't want to put 1.8 in here and because that wouldn't make any sense for your amplitude either right so um, hopefully you recognize that you know you have no potential energy in the middle zero potential energy and you want to figure out how fast it's going v in that spot and it should be going 10.142 meters per second at that spot. Now let's go ahead and uh, do this next part where, you know, what is the speed at the 1.5 meter point? And so, you know, in other words, like right here, how fast is it going? So go ahead and pause the clip, give this a shot and um, let's see uh, how you do. And then you can hit play when you're ready to check. Okay. So, uh, there, 1.5, so that's 0.3 from equilibrium. You should get 8.78 meters per second for that spot. So as we take a look at 
you know, the motion in, of an object that's in simple harmonic motion, we are taking a look at a, a system that's actually a sine curve. So what happens is we're, we're starting the mass at the compressed point and then we're releasing it. So in other words, this mass, you know, is going up and down, up and down. Uh, but we started at its, you know, started at the top position. So if if we had, let's say, you know, a uh, a paper that was going across, right, and it was scrolling, scrolling across like this, and the mass was going up and down, and it, you know, let's say there's some paint on this, it could paint a line going across, and so we start up here, you know, sine curve, and then it's going, you know, going and going. And, um, you know, we could see the, the motion of it. So there's good simulations where you can actually visualize that. Um, here's one of them that, uh, you know, you have to work through the Java permissions there. But um, it does a good job kind of showing you the graphing with it. So if we consider this mass that's, you know, hanging here, and let's say it starts up here, and then it's going up and down, and this wheel is going by, you know, the paper is going by, and this is painting it on top of it. Um, if it starts in the upward position, you know, we start with a cosine graph, right? And so, you know, it's going by, and, uh, you know, if it's shifted, it's shifted a little bit, this this would give us the sine graph for it, right? And so typically, we're going to start it up at the upward position with the, the sine graph, which is the equation. So, when we start with this, you know, we can look at, uh, you know, displacement, velocity, acceleration, and being able to identify, you know, each one properly is going to be really important. And so um, when we're talking about displacement, right, so this is just the, where it's located. Where is this object at along the way? The velocity is, you know, how fast and in what, which direction, right? So if you think about it, if you have this mass, that's like this, right? And let's say it's starting in the compressed place, and then it's starting to go down, right? And then it's going to go all the way down to the bottom. Well, you know, this spot right here, right? It's it's all the way up in the compressed spot. The velocity is zero, right? And then as it falls, it's going to go through equilibrium. Now, once it goes through equilibrium, it's going to be the fastest. And right here, this is equilibrium. Therefore, it's the fastest, but it's fastest in the negative, right? Because if you think of this box, it's going to be fastest in the negative. Now, as it gets all the way to the bottom and then actually reaches the bottom, which is this location right here, the velocity is zero here. And that's exactly what we see on this graph. And then after that, right, it's going to start to come back up this way. And as it comes back up this way, it's going to start to have a positive velocity. Once it's back at equilibrium here, it's going to have a maximum positive velocity. So it's at equilibrium, maximum positive velocity, right? And then again, it comes all the way to the top. Um, and once it's back all the way at the top, right, back all the way at the top, velocity is zero again. And then the cycle repeats. Now, acceleration, though, right, remember acceleration is the change in velocity over time. So that's where the force is the greatest. So it turns out that when it's at the very top up here, right, the force is maximum downward. Therefore, the acceleration is maximum in the negative. And we see that. Once it's at equilibrium here, right, the equilibrium, the velocity is maximum. But the acceleration is zero because there's no force. And then <clears throat> once it makes it all the way down to the bottom, again, maximum force, maximum force upwards. And so, you know, it's all the way at the bottom, velocity zero, and then maximum force upwards, positive velocity. And so all of these three, you know, uh, combined together, the velocity equals, you know, this is the equation that we can use for velocity. Um, you know, and maximum velocity equals the amplitude times the square root of decay over m. In terms of, you know, finding velocity at any moment, you take what the maximum is, and it's the sine of omega times t. So 2 pi frequency times uh, time. And, you know, we could figure out uh, what's happening. And so it's important as we consider this, the, um, you know, that we match up the equations properly with what's going on. And so, you know, likewise here with acceleration, um, you know, this turns out to be a, a, a negative cosine function, right, which should make sense. So negative cosine function here, you know, the velocity is a negative sine function, okay? And so, um, you know, that should make sense as well as it moves back and forth. And um, here's acceleration maximum Ka over m, so the spring constant times the amplitude over mass. 
Um, so again, big picture, right? We look at uh, position. Okay, so so we have a cosine graph with position, and that should make sense. Two pi frequency times time will give us, you know, the cosine of that will give us the actual location x of where we are. For the, uh, you know, the sine function, you know, starting at, at equilibrium there, um, you know, we have that. And, you know, velocity maximum in the middle. And then acceleration, negative cosine graph. And that should make sense again there with acceleration maximum. And so the corresponding, you know, being able to draw and being able to think through this is really important as you think through the equations that we use. And that should make sense, you know, based on each uh, step there. All right. So with these functions, right, position and you know finding it in different places where we can figure out you know where the actual location of it um, it's very important to remember with this unit that we're doing this in terms of radians and not degrees and so as we put these functions in there just be very very careful um, that you have this in terms of radians so position um, you know we talk about the greek letter omega that's two pi times the frequency um, frequency we know is how many times per second there's a full oscillation um, and this is how we calculate back and forth so if we figured out you know let's say this mass is going back and forth very quickly and let's say you know it starts up here goes all the way down and then comes all the way back let's say four times and it only takes a second for that we would have four hertz and so the frequency, the frequency would be 4 hertz. Now, the time that it takes to do that, we would have the period equals 1 over the frequency. That would be 1 over 4. It would only take 0.25 seconds for that to happen. And so you can use these as well, going back and forth from frequency and period. So let's take a look at this function here. And this represents an object in simple harmonic motion. And we want to determine you know what's going on with it so um, we want to draw the original graph and then we can draw you know an object in simple harmonic motion that corresponds to this graph so go ahead and start that first go ahead and draw you could draw this graph out and then you can draw the object in simple harmonic motion corresponding to the information that you're given here and then uh, we'll see how you do so go ahead and pause and then uh, do that and then you can hit play when you're ready to, to look at it Okay, and so uh, now on top of this one, um, let's draw one that's one-fourth out of phase. One-fourth out of phase. So one-fourth of a wavelength out of phase. So when we do that, right, we can, we can take each spot. You know, for instance, this spot is now here. 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 And we can draw on top of that, and that's what we'll look at. Um, one fourth out of phase and so in terms of you know what is the phase difference in terms of degrees and radians it's important to be able to determine that as well so if we think about that we can look at the shift time how much time did it shift and what is the overall period and if we do that we can figure that that out in terms of how many degrees it shifted so for instance in ours you know the shift from this spot to this spot is 0.5 seconds and the entire period of this wave, right, so a period of the simple harmonic motion from crest to a crest, that's two seconds. And so, therefore, it's 90 degrees out of phase. And so, we know that, um, you know, 360 degrees is 2 pi radians. That's the full way around. So, that would be 1.57 um, radians phase difference there. So in this one, let's draw another graph of, uh, you know, of the last one. Um, and then, yeah, so draw the original graph here. And then draw uh, one that's 180 degrees out of phase. And then what I want you to do is calculate the shift in radians. And so, yeah, go ahead and draw the original graph and then draw that 180 degree phase difference on top of that and then we'll see how you did. So go ahead and pause the clip and um, give that a shot, and then we'll see how you did. Okay, so uh, the shift then, um, if we figure that out, it's going to be a shift of one second. That would be, a, a, you know, the, the shift of 180 degrees. So if we do that, we're going to completely, you know, we're going to go from here 
to a full shift. Um, you know, this, you know, each, each of these, again, each of this, this spot going here. So for complete shift over. And when we do that, um, it would look like this. And so in terms of radians, this would be a 3.14 radian shift and, uh, you know, 180 degree shift. So when we think about, you know, an object that's moving and, and shaking um, or oscillating, we can, we can also relate this to what's happening with uh, wave motion. And so, you know, in this case here, uh, we can look at, you know, how much energy is transported over a wave, like an earthquake or any other kind of wave. And so when we look at intensity, intensity, um, we're looking at how much power is there um, over a particular area. And so, you know, if the amplitude um, increases, this is kind of a huge effect, right? So if the amplitude of a wave, you know, is, uh, let's say, you know, twice, twice the amplitude, you're actually going to get four times the intensity because it's amplitude squared. Um, let's say we had three times the amplitude, you know, of a wave, three times the amplitude, amplitudes from here to here, it's three times, right? You're going to have nine times the intensity. And so amplitude has a huge difference, you know, with simple harmonic motion or just waves in general, how much, uh, you know, intensity that you get. Now, as they spread out, and, you know, a wave can spread out three-dimensionally, so it's spreading, spreading out spherically. Um, what happens is, is it spreads out um, and the intensity decreases by one over R squared. So it's not, you know, like if we, if we double the distance from a source, it's only half the intensity. But the further you get out, you know, the intensity drops off exponentially um, due to one over R squared. So if we looked at an example of that, let's say, you know, we have a... Uh, a building here, skyscraper, and then we have, you know, a house over here, and let's say the epicenter of the earthquake is right here. So, you know, as the earthquake goes out, it's going out spherically, right? So then, you know, it's going out. And let's say that, um, you know, the distance from the earthquake well, we could even do this. This would even be better. If we 